In this video, I'm going to graph the basic sine function. And in order to do that, I'm going to start by listing my key points for the sine function. Whenever I'm graphing the sine or the cosine function, I'm going to have five key points. That's five x values. And then I'll find the corresponding y values. And that will help me basically kind of outline my graph. And then I can just join those points together. So um, my five key points are 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So now I need to find the y values that correspond to those. So I think about, well, what is the sine of 0? And that would be 0. And then what would be the sine of pi over 2? And that would be 1, which is the highest point on our uh, graph of f of x equals sine x. And then I'll continue on with the next three values. And what you'll see is there's a pattern. So we start at 0, go up to 1, then we're going to come back down to 0 again. And then you'll see how that continues. Alright, so I've got my five points that I'm going to graph. And so now I'm going to show those on the axes that I have here. Okay, so we've got 0, 0, pi over 2, 1, pi 0, 3 pi over 2, negative 1, and then 2 pi is 0 again. So now I'm going to join these points with a smooth curve. Hopefully, somewhat smooth. Oh, that's pretty wobbly. Okay, so there is one cycle or one period of the sine function. And keep in mind that the period of the sine function is 2 pi, so if we go from 0 to 2 pi, we've graphed one cycle of the basic sine function. Now, what you see is that the graph goes up, back to the middle, down, and then back to the middle. So I can follow that same pattern and keep drawing more points on this graph and keep sketching in more of the graph. And I can do this backwards as well. So, so I'm filling in these points and all I'm doing is just making sure that I alternate between the center and either the maximum or the minimum and And I try to draw that fairly nicely. Pretty good smooth curve. And there we go. Okay. So you can see that um, this forms a wave pattern and it's very often called the sine wave. So what I'm looking for in particular on your exam, um, you'll be given blank axes. So you're going to have to write in both the y values on the axis and the x values. And notice that, of course, we, we don't usually write in 0, or zero, 0 for x or 0 for y. So um, those you can leave out. But every other value here I'm going to label. And that's if those are the key points that we're looking at here. So you'll see that um, in other problems, that's going to change if we don't have just a very plain sine of x function. All right, so that's how you graph your basic sine function.